teachers, scholars and students. Um, our panel will focus on uh, the protagonists of university life uh, influence, um, who influence its evolution, subjects uh, which are in turn inflected by uh, political and economical powers and by the different legislations introduced by governments in uh, education and, uh, um, and elite evolution. Today's paper will approach these themes from different perspectives. I'm sure that each paper will enrich our knowledge of university's history and uh, on cultural elites. We, we hope uh, we'll get many questions to our speakers uh, and to Professor Victor Caradi, whom we are pleased to have uh, as discussant today. Now, uh, I, I, uh, I'd like to introduce the first uh, participant in our panel. Peter Tibor Nagy is a university professor at John Wesley College is founding member of the Research Center for Sociology of the Education and Youth in Budapest, president of the section of Sociology of Education of the Hungarian Sociological Association, is member of the Subcommittee of History of the Education of the Hungarian Academic of Sciences, and founding member of the Subcommittee of Sociology of Education of the Hungarian Academic of Sciences. He represented Hungary in a European project about the attractiveness of academic career headed by Junger, Jungen Enders. He was co-editor for a European Research Council financed at World Research Grant led by Professor Karadi about elite education in Central Europe and Baltics. Now is co-leader of one of the panel of the research led by Giselle Shapiro, head of École des Études en Sciences Sociales de Paris, about the history of social science. His main research interests include the state, church, education relations, history of the educational provision in Central Europe, national schooling, social history of science. He has published a lot of studies on the organization of educational science and the historiography in Hungary. His paper, titled Differences and Parallelities of the Social Circumstances of Academic and Extra-Academic Elite Groups in the Social Sciences, the case of Hungary 1990-45, focuses on a study on recruitment and career partners of actors of the social science in Hungary. Thanks to a proposographical approach, Professor Nagy presents not only a reconstruction of high scientific profiles, but also shows how various cultural policies have been during the first half of the 20th century in Hungary. The study will refer to individuals active in sociology, social statistics, geography, demography, political science, psychology, history, pedagogy, philosophy, and the study of national literature. Please, Professor Nagy. Thank you. Um, uh, dear colleagues, um, uh, in uh, this lecture, a uh, uh, little uh, changed my mind, and I uh, will speak less about the case of Hungary. And at first, I would like to uh, pay your uh, uh, attention in a, a special contradiction, which was brought the some some modern. Uh, uh, thought or some modern parad paradigm of the social sciences and the contradiction which appeared uh, 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 between the, university, the, the history of universities uh, and uh, uh, history of sciences, which originally in, the, uh, in, in our mind uh, in the 19th century uh, supported each other. Uh, now I see some, some contradiction uh, in this story, and at first I would like to uh, speak about this. The first uh, question that 
uh, uh, what is the the consequence of the of the um, uh, famous uh, book of uh, Kuhn, I uh, speak about uh, the um, uh, uh, structure of, uh, of uh, uh, scientific uh, uh, revolution. The, uh, uh, as you know, uh, the, uh, uh, in, in the paradigm of Kuhn or in the uh, spirit of uh, Kuhn, the uh, growing of, of sciences is not a linear uh, one, but it, it works as a kind of revolutionary um, uh, attraction. But what does it mean, or what is it, uh, uh, how, how uh, can we uh, uh, contact it uh, to the university life and the history of university it? There is a strange consequence that uh, uh, if we believe Kuhn that the, uh, uh, science, the, the future of science uh, in uh, seeing from any uh, uh, point of the history of science uh, will be a kind of post-revolutionary situation. It means that the, from any uh, point of history, the contemporary university uh, elite is a kind of counter-revolutionary uh, position which practically mean that when we speak about uh, uh, university elite, they are this university elite per definitionem against uh, the future of the science. Per definitionem, if we believe the, that the, the scientific uh, uh, life will happen in, the, in, a, in a kind of revolutionary uh, situation. Or, positively speaking, the, uh, how, how is it work, sorry, yes, uh, uh, the normal science which determines the recruitment of the, of the university elite and not that kind, and not really the future uh, of the real sciences. Okay, but let's see another um, uh, popular paradigm, the uh, sociology of uh, knowledge, uh, the, what was the consequence of uh, uh, thinking of Mannheim? If we believe Mannheim, uh, we, we uh, have to stress the, that the level of uh, uh, social integration of academics determine the chances of appearing of a revolutionary thought. I mean, uh, not academically or not scientifically revolutionary, but socially revolutionary uh, thought. Uh, if a, a scientist uh, or a, a scholar are better integrated into the ruling class, let's say that's, that's Marxist terminology, or, or ruling elite of, of, uh, of uh, uh, society, there are a smaller chance of the revolutionary thought. But naturally we note that um, the non-revolutionary thought uh, uh, bring uh, less social political conflicts around universities. And naturally, uh, in every society, the state or the, uh, or the ruling classes who are ready to pay the fees finance the universities, which definitely mean that the, um, the majority of any kind of uh, uh, social sciences or science scientists somehow belong to the ruling elite of the contemporary society and definitely not the future uh, of, the, uh, of the society. It means that if we see any of that two type of paradigm, both Kuhn who is on the basis of natural sciences and exclude any kind of real sociologist uh, uh, attitude, or we use Mannheim as a kind of post-Marxist or a quasi-Marxist argumentation, both modern uh, so, things thought that the, if we see the 
elites of university, we uh, uh, will speak, we will not speak about the uh, real situation or the real future of the sciences. I think it's a very, very interesting contradiction in generally of, uh, uh, in, in uh, uh, generally in the history of universities. And um, there is a new and interesting phenomenon that um, in the situation of the contemporary social sciences, the sociology of science and generally the, um, any kind of modern empirism um, press the history of science and uh, press the history of universities be more and more objective. Uh, practically, uh, please account how many professors do this or that, or how many professors uh, work here, what kind of professor works here. That's, that's a kind of, how can I say, a kind of uh, definition of the modern sociology. But as, as, uh, as we see some minutes before, uh, the normal science uh, couldn't be, uh, so the, the revolutionaries of the sciences couldn't be, definitely couldn't be the uh, majority in the university. It practically means that in the same uh, uh, moment, the modern thinking um, about uh, the history of university and history of science uh, urge us or press us be accountable, um, the persons, the books, and so on. And the other side, uh, the same modern uh, sciences declare that anything what we could uh, account could be a false uh, uh, picture because it is, uh, it's coming from the a conservative and non-future oriented plus, uh, place of the, of the sciences. Uh, it is a pessimist situation. <laughs> but I would like to suggest something, and uh, my solution, what I would suggest uh, here, to make a kind of double work uh, in the field of science, I mean in the elite uh, research in the field of science. Uh, the first part of the double work that we have to describe the formal academic elites, uh, for example, professors, members of academy, uh, or that kind of boring guy than us. And, uh, and the uh, other side, we uh, try to describe to somehow a kind of counter-elite, an anti-elite, the people who should be uh, leader of, uh, uh, should be leader academics, uh, the persons uh, who would be or who, who uh, will be uh, the actors of the uh, uh, Kuhn-type history or Mannheim-type history of uh, sciences. Principally, I think it's a kind of double uh, chance and one side of the story see one part, other side see the other part. How can we do it? How could we find that who should be uh, leader academics uh, uh, in a revolutionary city? Traditionally, the, the uh, uh, normal elite or the leading elite, formerly leading elite of the academic life uh, is, uh, can be um, uh, describable as a mess, which determined by uh, social circumstances typically accountable. But when we uh, speak about the uh, history of science itself and not the uh, history of universities, we like the heroes. Lonely heroes, great actors, um, we are in Pisa, please think about the legend of Galilei. It's very, very important, all of us, that he is a lonely hero. All heroes in the, in the, social, in the, in the history of sciences are heroes. But uh, 
It means that in sociological meaning, the group of uh, normal elite and the group of uh, that kind of elite of the future, incomparable. Because the normal elite, a mess, a boring mess, the heroes, extra persons. The extra persons who is uh, legitimized by the gene, gene unity and not the social circumstances. Um, it means that they will be incomparable. What would be the solution? The solution could be uh, to create, not uh, create a normative elite, but to, to create a reputational elite. The reputational, uh, for, for the uh, selection of uh, reputational elite, I would suggest uh, to use the um, um, uh, national or international biographical uh, uh, lexicons, biographical encyclopedias. Bec why? Because uh, when a biographical encyclopedia or an encyclopedia um, uh, is editing, every academic uh, group and, and every uh, scientific branch interested in the stressing of the institutional continuity in the competition of other academic groups, uh, groups and, and branches. In this situation guarantee that uh, they will involve uh, the formal academic elite uh, of the past. Uh, that was the first part uh, of, uh, of my uh, research. And the second, that every academic subgroup, so every new paradigm, every new topic, is interested in to show he's a special inheritor, his special uh, past. This special past uh, will uh, uh, bring a bigger number uh, of scholars, uh, sometimes non-formally uh, uh, academics. Uh, for example, they, they find somebody who wrote similar things in, in reviews or teach similar things in a secondary school, but uh, now we are the uh, clever new academic uh, persons uh, brought uh, into the university life, but there was some, some prelude of the story. Because we are interested in to show this uh, 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 prelude, we lobby in these uh, persons uh, to the uh, national list of the famous people, uh, which practically mean that um, we built, uh, without any decision, we, we built a kind of anti-elite, a kind of competitive or a comparative elite uh, uh, to the, which, which, uh, which, which could be uh, comparable to the official um, uh, elite. Uh, and it's very important that we have to use non-scientific encyclopedias, I mean encyclopedias in uh, which consist uh, um, uh, not only academic persons, but uh, 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 politicians and artists and so on, because in the situation there is a kind of common interest of different part of uh, scholars, uh, put persons, academic persons, in a kind of symbolic competition with other part of the story, the, the uh, story of politicians or story of artists. It's our eminent interest when we are in a, that kind of, when in a board, in a, that type of uh, lexicons or, or encyclopedias. Okay, um, uh, very important, uh, let's use uh, more encyclopedias and not only one. Why? Because um, um, when 10 years or 20 years or 100 years passed, 
there is a kind of natural selection of the persons. Um, all of us remember that, um, no, sorry, in my, in my age, my old, uh, that kind of old person that us, remember that how famous uh, scholars were 30 or 50 uh, years before, some kind of persons. Now, almost nobody um, um, uh, uh, remember uh, them, uh, which mean that um, in the different uh, situation of the, of the science, or the different periods of the different sciences, other and other people remained um, uh, in the list of uh, important uh, uh, people. Why is it important for us? It's important because originally, so when we see the, the contemporary persons, the former, the, the size of the formal academic elite groups will be bigger than the counter-elite or the anti-elite because uh, all of us think so, that's okay, he is a university professor, it will be a very uncomfortable situation if we don't put him into uh, the, the uh, lexicon or into the encyclopedia. 50 years later, it will not be an important uh, factor. So it could be an, an, an uh, important comparison to, to compare the selection of normal and non-normal uh, 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 actors of, of science uh, in the contemporary and 20 or 100 years later. Um, uh, yes. I think if we speak the uh, farer uh, uh, history or, or long term, it's it, I think it's absolutely clear for everybody. So, who knows who were the, the uh, famous professors in the decades of Newton? Or who were, who were the famous professors of the French University in the time of water? Perhaps if you are historian of the um, 18th uh, century, but in a, in a normal knowledge, nobody remember them. I think that will happen with all of us, be sure. So uh, that will happen with all of us, that a, a kind of new selection will select uh, that who is the, the real uh, scientist for the future. Okay. Um, a short uh, uh, comment that, um, starting from this viewpoint, we um, made uh, three uh, national level perception of the Hungarian science and scientists. One uh, uh, perception was the so-called Rivai uh, lexicon. It was uh, uh, published, uh, as you see, and uh, in the first third of the uh, 20th uh, century. That was a um, biographical, a general biographical lexicon, which was uh, 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 published in the uh, last uh, 30 year uh, of the of the softer time of the, of the communist uh, period. And uh, there is the uh, great uh, Hungarian uh, lexicon, which is uh, published practically in Nova Day uh, as, as a reputational uh, uh, elite. OK. Um, let's see only uh, uh, one uh, 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 hypothesis. As a, as a case study for the, that whole uh, story. Uh, the hypothesis that uh, every lexicon will bring several official and non-official academic of the half past and present of uh, the encyclopedia. 
the second question is the uh, representation of office, official part of encyclopedia decline as the distance between the date of the publishing and date of birth grew or and so and the third that the role of academics in the uh, national uh, uh, elite grew. I mean that the uh, 19th century or the 18th century academics, uh, the role of uh, that uh, group relatively bigger uh, for that decade. If we see an older lexicon, if we see a newer lexicon than an older one, an older lexicon uh, uh, um, see the um, uh, governing elite or the political elite or political aristocrats more important persons than uh, the boring uh, uh, academics and scientists. So uh, 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 important rich man or an important aristocrat uh, for the contemporaries seem uh, to be a more important person than an academic of the same time. And the, after 50 years or 100 years, it became clear that the book of him remained somehow in the uh, uh, national thinking or the national reputational uh, uh, viewpoint. The famous person or the great aristocrat disappeared uh, from the story. Okay. Uh, be more concrete uh, that um, the pre-1918 uh, period, um, in that 20 year, uh, the first, uh, dec first two decades of the 20th century, there was two great cleavages in the in the social yes in social sciences. One uh, cleavage was the dominant sciences contra modern sciences, and the second cleavage was the modern traditionalist cleavages. Only one information which we uh, sought, uh, which we sought to think or to see in the list of uh, scientists, and that's the social background of that uh, scientist. And we can see that. Um, more modern social science, more non-Christian uh, Hungarian origin. It shows that uh, if we see uh, the theology, history, literary history, and uh, linguistics, was relatively not high uh, uh, percent of Jewish. But if we see the modern uh, sciences, especially sociology, um, uh, 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 modern private law economy, uh, uh, the uh, much higher uh, uh, percent of Jewish. But, but not only the Jewish Christian uh, 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 role uh, uh, express that kind of modern, non-modern uh, 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 cleavage, but if we see that um, within the cluster of, uh, within the clusters of, uh, sorry, uh, yes, um, Yes, so not, not only the Jews Christian uh, um, uh, relation is responsible for that non Magyar or non Christian Magyar face of the uh, role of uh, uh, modern sciences, but within the non Jewish part of academic elites, um, the uh, modern, uh, in, the, in the field of modern uh, sciences, uh, had a German uh, background. So it practically means that in every uh, modern sector of the, of the uh, sciences, the Jewish and German uh, elite determined uh, the um, a, a Hungarian uh, fields of uh, uh, social sciences. And uh, if we uh, would see other elements uh, of the um, uh, 
academic and extra uh, 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 academic group, we could build uh, similar stories. So the extra academic uh, 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 groups, uh, not describable as describable as the story of a lonely uh, big uh, person, a lonely big uh, uh, thinkers, but def good definable social clusters of the uh, society. Uh, at, uh, it was only one element, that is the, the ethnical or religious background, but any kind of other uh, 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 cluster or any viewpoint could be uh, a similar uh, outcome. Thank you for your attention. Thank you to Professor Nagy. I think that will be a lot of questions uh, about this, uh, this uh, approach to uh, um, to the to the study of uh, academic elite and uh, uh, in general to social science.